All right, so today we're gonna do an interactive jam track, but we're gonna do it in a little bit of a different approach. So for today, I'm gonna try and do some trading with you, but we're gonna specifically try and apply what I call diagonal arpeggios. So these are gonna be seventh chord arpeggios that are built. We're using today a D Dorian jam track. D Dorian shares the same notes as C major. And so we're gonna be able to use any of the seventh chord arpeggios that live in the key of C major. Now the neatest thing about playing in Dorian is that there are no avoid notes. All the notes sound good, which means we can basically use any of the notes of the scale, and therefore we can use any of the notes of the arpeggio. We have this nice little groovy D track that you could also download below if you'd like to play on your own. And I definitely uh, will have a PDF down there for you to kind of show you these shapes that we are playing. Now, I'm only gonna play them on the first two strings today, and I'll kind of instruct you a little bit as I play through them, and then we're gonna do some trading back and forth. If these are new for you, I would highly recommend you first maybe try and just practice them a little bit by yourself, or you can just trade using smaller snippets of the stuff. But I'm gonna go through all of them, so this is definitely an intermediate plus kind of lesson. So let's go ahead, we'll jump in, we'll do some playing, and we'll do some trading. All right, so we're gonna start down in the lower position with a D minor seven arpeggio. Then we have E minor sevens next. F major seven. Notice they all sound good, right? Uh, G seven. A minor seven. B minor seven flat five. C major seven. And then we're back to D minor seven. Now, those arpeggios would just repeat, so if we wanted to keep going, we have E minor seven, F major seven, and then we can get all the way, if you have 22 frets like I do, to a G seven. All right, so again, all of these notes sound good. So even if you're not, uh, that's happening, like feeling like you're comfortable with the arpeggios, you could take the track and you could just jam over it, and you don't have to worry about playing really any bum notes or playing the changes because all the notes sound great. So I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play this D minor seven arpeggio up here. And it's at the uh, kind of 13, 15, 13, 17. You take it. All right. we have four notes you don't always have to play all four notes in your phrase you can play smaller chunks take it coming back in you got it coming back in add in the arpeggio below C major 7 so there's my D minor 7 here's my C major now I hit that juicy B note there at the 12th fret but it sounds so cool notice I'm all not always playing the arpeggio from the lowest note first sometimes I play high first or maybe I'll play a little phrase in there nice when you start to kind of put them together and the fingerings are really comfy when you just play them on two strings like that. Best way to practice arpeggios if you're just working on your arpeggios. Is that in the next chord below? It's B minor 7 flat 5. That is a really cool sound. Take it, try that one. Coming back in, I'm gonna play all three.
start to get these really cool sequences. That's just playing each of them descending. What if I played each of them ascending? together we got a minor 7 B minor 7 flat 5 C major 7 D minor 7 I know it's a lot of information and if you haven't dealt with these yet you might have to practice them a little bit more before you can kind of quickly play them right no problem that's totally cool let's try together that's cool but you don't have to you can stay on just one of them even and it'll sound great sound great in a nice little sequence really cool all right so the chord below the a minor 7 is going to be G7 this is the funniest one to play fingering wise it's kind of a little tricky in my opinion like 6 8 uh, 7 10 put them together again you don't have to play them that fast but that might be a goal for you that's eighth notes they all sound great Go down one more. We've got an F major seven. That's five six five eight. That note is kind of juicy. The fifth fret. That's the two of the D Dorian scale. The, the note E. You know, if you're strong in your hammer-ons and pull-offs, you can hammer these really nicely. Or even pull off. That is a great exercise and a whole lot of fun. It sounds so good, right? Get that nice and seamless. The next lower chord is E minor seven, three, five, three, seven. Love this sound. Again, it sounds colorful. But beautiful, you know? That's just going up E minor seven to F major seven. Up one, down the next. All right, take it, explore a little bit. down to the lowest one that we started with that's one three one five fret fret numbers that one's real stretchy okay if we went through them d minor seven e minor seven f major seven g seven a minor seven b minor seven flat five c major seven d minor seven we're back you could keep going if you want i won't for this video Let's trade a little bit. Notice that I walk up some and down others. I'm trying to see that. I'm trying to see them connect. Here I go. And always you can come back to stuff you already know. Like say you know your D minor pentatonic right here. Works very well. Take it. 
start low. Awesome, so I do have a course on mastering diagonal arpeggios. It's all these arpeggio shapes. Where I walk through them much slower, there's tab. It's called Mastering Diagonal Arpeggios. I'll leave a link below and you can grab 40% off if you're interested in picking that up. It'll teach you how to improvise with them a little bit more fluidly. They sound so good. Again, I want to make it a point to say that uh, playing arpeggios, if you're first learning them, let's say you're even just working on your triads, Learning your arpeggios in a Dorian context, like over a Dorian vamp, say you're taking the major, sorry, the, uh, the triads that live in the C major scale, and you're just playing those over a Dorian vamp, it's gonna be the easiest way to make them sound great. I see a lot of people online, um, you know, going for arpeggios and trying them, but they sound so bland a lot of times. And so learning how to decorate them over a Dorian kind of track is really cool. And as you can tell, these seventh chord arpeggios are incredibly awesome as well. All right, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to leave a comment if you enjoyed this lesson and uh, make sure to watch this video next.